Woods Lee Summercraft, welcome to this year's virtual wood show, March 5th, 6th and 7th. Um, this is going to be a demonstration video of a bowl that I've turned for the second time. So basically what I'm referring to is dealing with wet wood, fresh wood, cutting it, preparing it, turning it once while it's wet and then storing it and drying it and then once it's dry bringing it back to the lathe to true up and finish completely. Now there are ways of doing that a lot faster than just waiting for that log to dry because it can take up to a year per inch of thickness for that wood to dry properly and you want to get the moisture content down as fast as you can. Well I say fast, you want it to be slow but you want it to be faster than taking several years. Um, I know I don't have that kind of patience. so. A friend of mine recently gave me a walnut log and from that walnut log I cut it into different blanks and uh, this is one blank, it's a crotch section of wood so the crotch section being the trunk and a branch coming out here this being the crotch so from this blank you could make a regular bowl with this being the back or you could make a live edge bowl with this being the back which is what I'm going to be doing today this is still wet. It's wet in my hand. I just bought it in from outside. What I tend to do is cut and prepare the wood and put it in black bags, like plastic black bags, tie them up and leave them in the work in the uh, shed or the garage outside until I get a chance to process them. Now sometimes that will end up with spalting the wood, but uh, less likely to crack, which is the problems that we run into and that we face when we're dealing with fresh wood. Now I know that a lot of people don't have the funds to buy exotic woods and expensive woods from the local hardwood store so one option is for you to go out and find some wood. So go out and find somebody that's cutting a tree down and ask them if they'd be willing to uh, to give you a log. Most people will give you a log for free I find. Now there's obviously lots of different types of species of wood so whatever's available to you but a hardwood is the best kind of wood to turn so uh, for me that would be maple and walnut is two of the most common woods that I can get around here so uh, let's get this to the bandsaw the first thing we want to do is to cut a circle out of this and then I'm not going to rough this one out because I already have one prepared and uh, so I'm going to show you I'll explain to you the process that I went through. So the first thing I'm going to show you actually is the moisture content by using this moisture meter it will tell me the moisture content of this piece of wood and as you can see that's the high setting it's about 24-25% moisture content right here and on the end grain it's above 35% on the end grain here so this is a very wet piece of wood if I tried to turn this complete and finish it I can guarantee you it would warp and it possibly would even crack depending on how I turn it now if I were to turn this at a thin even thickness throughout the whole piece it most likely won't crack but it will definitely warp on you so if you want that as an artistic piece you could go ahead and turn it but make sure you turn it to the same thickness throughout the whole bowl. So the first thing I would do is select a disc and locate it where I want the disc to be on the bark side. Now I want to check out the crotch section to see how much of this I can save um, because the further over here the less of the crotch section I'll have. So I'll, I'll tend to be more towards this edge. I think that that will be fine. I will just get this screwed into the wood. This is just a rough guide. So now what I'm going to do is I've got a quarter inch blade in the bandsaw. It is actually this one is a 6 TPI blade and um, I'm going to wear my safety glasses and we're going to basically follow the curvature of that circle
Now I went off a little bit here on the back side, but that's fine because that will just turn away or I could take another pass on this little section here. But uh, I think I need a new blade in my bandsaw. I bought the blank over to the drill press and I put a big force on a bit in here. Essentially we're going to remove the bark from the center area so we can decide how we want to mount this on the lathe, either with a face plate or a worm screw. But you need to be able to mount it to this face first. Now that we have a nice flat area on the bark side of the uh, blank, you can mount a faceplate to that or use a worm screw. You may have to make some slight adjustments to this surface so that it sits properly and that you get a nice cut and you get a nice rim that suits what you're looking for. If this blank is sitting on the lathe at too much of an angle, then you're not going to get a very good rim to your bowl. So having said that, I'd turn this to be the back of the bowl with a tenon and I would try to make a slightly oversized tenon because you're going to have to remove some of that tenon in the second turn. And then I would hollow the inside out and try to make the rim approximately the same size, same thickness throughout the whole piece, maybe an inch, inch and a half at the most. Usually about 10% of the diameter. So if it's a 10 inch diameter, you want a good one inch thick rim all the way through. And now that you've turned your bowl with your tenon on the underside and you've hollowed it out and you've made the rim about an inch thick all the way through and it's still 35% moisture so you, if you finish it and it's an uneven thickness it will crack and at the very least it's going to warp. So what I want to do is dry this bowl. So what a lot of people will do is take this bowl wrap it in its own shavings in a cardboard box or a plastic bag or a paper bag and then they'd leave it. The other option is to dry it a bit faster. What I do is I'll take this and I'll put it in the microwave. I have a shop microwave and I will microwave it 55 seconds at a time, two or three shots and then let it steam off and then I'll put it in a plastic bag. Put it in the plastic bag, it's going to vap off and it's going to condensate and it's going to dry but it's going to dry a lot slower. I figured it takes about 25 days, 27 days, then you can take it out of the uh, bag and you can just leave it on the side. So you're in and out of the bag every day for a, for a few minutes um, to heat it up and release some of that steam. Now I, I weighed this initially when I first turned it and it was 953 grams and it has now dropped down to 664 grams. So that's almost 300 grams of moisture that it's lost. So that's like a third of the weight of this bowl has left in moisture. And the moisture content now has gone down to basically nothing. I'm, I've got it on the low setting and I'm picking up no moisture in that at all. So that is not moving, it's not cracking, it's not warping when I finish that now, which is what I'm looking for. Um, if you look at the end grain, there's no cracks. You can see where I've written the weights on it right there. And it doesn't have to be particularly pretty. The turn doesn't have to be particularly pretty, but uh, that's the rough turn. So what we're going to do today is we're going to put this back on the lathe and we're going to finish this bowl. And hopefully, hopefully it's going to be a beautiful bowl with a live edge. So stick with me and let's get this finished. So one thing I forgot to mention is when I turn the tenon on this bowl, I always put a little divot in the center. That's my exact center of this bowl. So when I initially hold that in there with pressure, I get my exact center. Now you can adjust that if you really want to. If this didn't turn out as central as you wanted it, you can pivot that slightly to centralize it a little bit better, but I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this matting, put it inside the bowl like this, and then put it up against the chuck, and then I'll bring my tailstock up. Now, if this was not a live edge bowl, it might be possible 
to use this to put the bowl against and push but because it's a live edge I can't do that so I'm going to push the bowl into the chuck I'm going to bring the tailstock up lock that into position find that little center spot again and lock that in and push it in there now I've got my speed down as low as I can get it this is going to have warped I can guarantee it okay so the first thing I'm going to do now would be to true up the tenon and I want this tenon to go into a specific set of jaws this is my selection of jaws that I have and this is the set that I'm choosing today um, usually um, you don't want the tenon to be too small but you don't want it to be too big so you it's kind of like choosing which porridge you want or which bed you're gonna sleep in you want the right set so I think that this is the correct set for this particular bowl and what I'm gonna do is measure the inside between the inside if I was making a mortise I would measure outside to outside I would make it slightly bigger the mortise would be slightly bigger and on the inside I'm gonna make the tenon slightly bigger than this which I believe is about two and three quarters so something right about there yeah two and a half two and three quarters so I'm marking right there which is it's actually 2.6 so it's just under two and three quarters so I've marked where my tenon is going to be so now I have to remove this wood and make a dovetail there I'm going to be using a bowl gouge, it's a 5 8 bowl gouge uh, with the Ellsworth grind, the Irish grind on it and we're just going to nibble away at this edge until I get down to the diameter that I'm looking for for the tenon and then we'll make a dovetail. So with face shield on Okay, so that has got us down to the diameter we're looking for I need to start shaping the outside of the bowl and form this dovetail I'm going to start just by removing some of this to true it up a little bit Okay, so you can see how much it's warped by how much it's removing here and how much it's not removing here. So it tends to push out into the end grain areas and sink or reduce at the side grain areas. So I'm going to continue now. I'm going to go with a push cut around this corner and then we'll come back and we'll create the dovetail. Just going to bring my speed up a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, we get a much cleaner cut with a push cut than we do a pull cut. So I'm going to, I've got a little bit more I still need to remove here this area here is actually getting quite thin so hopefully we don't lose it altogether but uh, I think we should be okay so I'm gonna do another push cut around this corner maybe two more push cuts see where we're at and then we'll do a push cut around the whole back side of the bowl and we'll make that uh, dovetail on the mortise so I've increased my speed a little bit I'm doing about 
just under a thousand RPM. And there's still just a little bit more. So one more cut, I think. And that has removed it so I'm quite happy with that a little bit of sanding there's not really much tear out there just a few tool marks to remove and uh, and that'll be good so I'm gonna put the dovetail in now and I'll be using I tend to use a skew um, you could use a beading parting tool but uh, I tend to go with the skew and you want to raise the tool rest so that you're cutting on center Let's just take a little look at shape. What do we want to do for shape? Um, I think that's okay actually. That's not too bad. The bottom of, of the bowl is going to be right here and the bowl is going to disappear into the table and it will sit nice and firmly on the table. The base of the bowl on this one The base sitting on the table is going to be approximately four inches. So nice and stable. Utility bowl, you can put things on it, won't fall over. So let's get this sanded up. I'm going to work through the grits. I'm going to start at, I think I'll start at 100 grit and work our way up. If you look here, it hardly needs sanding. It's so, just a couple of tool marks. Okay, so I've got you on your side here looking at this bowl and uh, I'm going to put the dust extractor on and start sanding this. You don't want to breathe the dust in from uh, any wood really, but uh, walnut is toxic so it can affect some people. It doesn't seem to bother me too much, but it is toxic. So I'm going to put my uh, respirator on and have the dust extractor on. The other thing too is when you're turning live edge it's not always the easiest thing to sand so I will often sand this by hand on the uh, the wing that's up here because you've got hit and miss with the sandpaper and what you can end up doing actually is wearing down some of this bark because it's a lot softer than the actual wood so and that's not a very good look so quite often I'll do this by hand if need be I'll use a drill with a sandpaper pad 
but this isn't looking too bad. So I started at 100 grit and I'm still at 100 grit. What I want to do is make sure that I get rid of any marks or any tear out that there might be. So one of the best ways to do that, before I start working my way up through the grits, because if you start doing that too soon, you're never going to get rid of those marks. So what I tend to do is take a sanding sealer and just seal that Put the sanding sealer over the end grain especially and it's going to highlight any sort of uh, tear out that you might have and then you can deal with it now while you're still at 100 grit. So this stiffens up the fibers and then it shows you any marks, any any tool marks, any tear out or anything. There's just a little bit here that I need to deal with and I'll bring you in and show you. Okay so I've started at 100 grit and I'm going to stay there until I get rid of this little bit of tear out that's on the end here. Tiny little bit there, not much but uh, applying that sanding sealer just raises that grain and it shows it up really nicely. So there's no point in working your way up through the grits until that's gone, otherwise it will still be there and you'll never get rid of it. So stay at the low grit until all your tool marks and all of your tear out is gone. I have now sanded this to 400 grit as immaculately as I can or as I'm happy with. So now you can use a tack rag, just be careful with that live edge. To remove the uh, the dust, you can also use denatured alcohol and or air. You could use your compressed air as well. But uh, I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the uh, the myelin sanding sealer on it. This is a cellulose-based sanding sealer. Um, we'll apply that to the entire backside of this bowl, and then uh, we'll put in as much as it will soak in allow the grain to soak up that sealer, especially on the end grain. It's going to start bringing out some of the colors in this wood. It's got some nice lighter areas in it. Nice definition between the heartwood and the sapwood. So, as I was saying earlier, it's really critical when you're sanding that on your lowest grit that you start with, make sure you remove all of the tear out. If there's any tear out there, that's the time to remove it. Don't try and don't try and remove tear out when you're going up through 220, 320. You want to do that with the low grits. Get some of it in the bark as well. So give that a little bit of time to dry once uh, you've fully saturated the end grain especially, but the whole piece in a sanding sealer. Then take a scouring pad and uh, just denib it a little bit because the sanding sealer will raise the grain a little bit and also you'll get shiny and dull spots from uh, any streaks that might occur. So we'll just take that down just a little bit. Take a look, see see if it's done its job. May have to just go over that area there a little bit because uh, it's on the wing. Okay, so that's now sealed. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, Yorkshire Grit Original, and basically we're going to apply that over the whole piece. It's an abrasive paste. So what it's going to do essentially is going to do the sanding for us but it's a lot easier. So uh, we apply it over the whole piece, thin layer, not too much, but you know, enough that it's gonna do a job, that it's gonna do its job. Um, 
apply it over the whole piece. Okay, and then in slow speed we'll turn that on and we'll start working it in and you'll hear it cutting as it makes like a shh sound. Now admittedly on a live edge bowl it's a little bit difficult to do any kind of a wax finish, but it is possible. Start bringing the speed up. The reason I have it down low initially is because it just spits the wax at you. And now as it starts working, working its way in, it's breaking down the fine abrasive in the product and it's getting finer and finer, giving you a finer surface on the wood. Now I'm still using the same piece of paper that I applied it with. And then after maybe a minute, you can use a fresh piece of paper towel and start removing the product because what you want to do now is remove all of the remainder of the product. This is a beeswax based product and beeswax melts in your hand so it's a soft a low melt temperature wax. Most products on the market are beeswax based makes them nice and soft but it also makes them susceptible to not lasting very long. And we'll talk about that with the uh, Hampshire Sheen. Okay, I'm going to get a fresh piece of paper towel. Bring the speed up a little bit. And keep doing this until nothing else comes off on the towel. Burnishing it in. Try not to catch your fingernails on the wood. Because it will mark it up. Okay, so that's Yorkshire Grit Original now done its job. What we can do is if you want an even finer finish, that's really smooth now, but we can move up from Yorkshire Grit Original to Yorkshire Grit Microfine, which is an even finer abrasive. I need a new tin actually. I need to open up a new tin. So this stuff is uh, a very fine abrasive cream. Again, you apply it over the whole piece. And then in slow speed again, do the exact same process. Start working it in. Now this is just if you want to get a finer finish than what you've already achieved. Uh, the original gets you to about a thousand grit equivalent. The microfine is intended to get you closer to the micro mesh equivalent. It's intended really for exotic hardwoods, which are really hard and tight grain, and acrylics. That's what that product was designed for, but uh, I tend to use it on everything. Same thing, I'm starting to remove the product. Fresh towel. Watching your fingers on those edges. And that's about it. So 
from there we have to put a finish on that. Yorkshire grit is not a finish, it's a foundation for a finish. And admittedly with a live edge piece it will tend to get stuck in the bark and the voids a little bit. So you want to pick that out, blow it out. So with a fresh paper towel I'll apply some Hampshire Sheen Gloss over the entire piece, just a thin layer. And then I'll let that vap off a little bit so that I can buff it in. Now the solvents in there will vap off leaving just the oils and the waxes. You don't want to start burnishing this in straight away. You want to allow the solvent to vap off so that you're just left with the wax and the oils. So that has been set up for a couple of minutes. It is now tacky dry and uh, I'm going to use the same paper towel that I applied it with and I'm going to start burnishing that in. Moving over to a fresh piece of paper towel. Being careful with my fingers. And the same thing, you want to keep doing this until nothing's coming off on the towel. I'm going to put two coats of gloss on and then I'm going to move on to the microcrystalline wax. Which will be our last coat. Okay, that's looking good. So now I'm going to apply a second coat to make it even nicer. That is now set up, so I'm going to buff that in again. That's looking really nice. What I'm going to do now is for a top coat to protect that finish, I'm going to open up a brand new tin of Hampshire Sheen's Food and Toy Safe Microcrystalline Wax and that's what it looks like. What we're going to do is apply a really small amount. You don't need a lot over the whole surface and the same thing, I'll let that set, let it dry and go tacky before I buff it in. Now this has got a really high melt temperature so no amount of handling will Diminish that finish, it will last for a long time. Okay, so I'll let that sit for a few minutes and then we'll buff that in and the outside will be done and we can turn it around and hollow it out. Now that that has dried a little bit, I can start buffing that in. Until nothing comes off on the towel and then it's done, we'll take a look at these wings a little bit because I know that it's hard to get to them. A couple of small inclusions in the bark that the wax is stuck into. And that looks to be done. So now what we'll do is we'll get that turned around in the chuck and we'll hollow it out. I have this bowl turned around now so I can finish the inside. Now I've got to be careful because this edge here is already quite thin as is this edge but these edges are fairly thick because of the warping that occurred. So basically I'm going to be taking my bevel and it's going to be cutting straight in straight in to follow the same curvature as the outside and then I've got to make sure my tailstock is out of the way so that I have room for the tool to maneuver around because it's going to start way over here and by the time I get to the bottom 
I'm going to be way over here. So there's there's going to be a large swing with the with the tool to follow that bevel all the way around the underside of the bowl. Now I've already checked that there's nothing hitting and I've got a sharp gouge and we'll make a start. decided to stop there. I'm at approximately 3 8 thickness all the way through to the bottom. I don't want to make a funnel. Um, it's never fun when you do that. I've made a couple in my time, that's for sure. So uh, especially when you start to remove the tenon from the underside, that's when you could make a funnel, right? So I've decided now that that's as far as I'm going to go, so now I'm going to start sanding. So I'll do the same thing again as before. I'll sand at 100 and I'll make sure any tear out, any tool marks is gone before I work my way through the grits. So that's the most critical point right there, is to make sure you get rid of any marks before you move up through the grits. <laughs> So once again I'll take this tack rag and I'll just take out some of the, uh, the dust inside. There's plenty of it, plenty of it. 
and what I'm going to do is I will put a, a layer of sanding sealer on this again and that's going to highlight any uh, any more tool marks or tear out that I've missed and it will stiffen up those fibers and then I can uh, sand some more I've applied sanding sealer to the inside of this bowl and it's showing up a little bit of tear out on the end grain so I'm going to take care of that now It is sanded down to 320 on the inside now. You can use a combination of sandpaper and these discs in a drill. That really helps you get all of that, all of those tool marks out and any any uh, tear out that you might have. Just make sure, like I said before, I'll state it time and time again. Make sure when you're at your lowest grit that you've removed all of the tear out and all of the tool marks. Because once you start working your way up through the grits, they're not going to come out. And by pushing harder on the sandpaper, it doesn't doesn't get rid of them you should need to go back to the lower grits of sandpaper to remove them if that's the case so I'm just going to give it a really light going with 400 grit and then we're going to go and then we're going to apply our finish you can use any sort of an alcohol and it will pull the dirt out of the uh, cores of the wood you can use a tack rag or a air. This is where a toothbrush comes to the rescue to remove all of that dust that's in the uh, in the bark without damaging the bark too much. So this is now cleaned. I've got the dust out of it. What I'm going to do is apply the Mylan sanding sealer and uh, allow the wood to soak up as much of it as it wants especially in the end grain again so the sanding sealer has done its job it sealed the wood nicely and it's dry pretty quickly so now I'm just going to denib it with a scouring pad just to get rid of the, sh the shiny spots you'll find that it's uh, slightly uneven so you want to even that finish out it's raised the grain a little bit so it's just going to denib it we'll put it in forward And we'll do these areas by hand here. And we'll take a look at that. That looks nice. I don't see any I don't see any unevenness in the finish, so that's nice. Looks good. So now I'm gonna apply some Yorkshire grit over the whole piece. So with a clean piece of paper towel. We'll work that in. And on slow speed we'll start that. And what it's going to basically do, it's going to get us from that uh, 400 grit, it's going to bring us up to about a thousand grit equivalent. Um, without all of the dry dust and it's a lot easier you can hear it cutting start bringing the speed up a little bit still using the same piece of paper towel that I applied it with
Now I'm going to use a fresh piece of paper towel and start removing the product. And now by hand I'm going to have to have a go at these edges where the uh, wings are because I, I can't really get them while it's spinning very easily. Now I'm going to apply the Yorkshire Grit Microfine, which is going to basically just get it even smoother. It's going to bring it up to the micro mesh level areas. That's what it's intended for. It's like I said earlier, it's intended for acrylics and resins and exotic hardwoods. But uh, I like to use it on everything. It just gives you that edge, I guess, hopefully. Play it all over, turn the speed back down, start working it in, same process. Bring the speed up a little bit. Okay, let's uh, have a look at that. We've got to get the wings. And it's going to get stuck in the bark a little bit, but we'll get the toothbrush and we'll pull that out. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. And we're going to apply that to the whole piece, just a thin layer. And then we'll just let that sit for a few minutes to vap off. That is now set up, it's gone tacky and dry, so the solvents have all vapped off and I'll take the same paper towel that I was using to apply it and I'll start buffing that in. I'm turning at about 900. It really depends on the piece that you're turning as to what speed you go at. I'm going to try and get those wings a little, a little bit. Move on to a fresh piece of paper towel here. Keep on burnishing that wax in. We'll have a little look at that. So, I still need to apply some more heat to this because I can see there's some areas where the wax hasn't melted into the wood yet. So, keep on going until that's all melted in. the first coat of Hampshire Sheen gloss I'm gonna put the second coat on just like I did on the outside I'll come back when that's done and then we'll do the micro crystal in well that's just given it an absolutely beautiful shine so all that's left to do for the finish is to apply the micro crystalline wax to the inside and then uh, 
we'll turn it around and we can take the foot off so a really light coat of my crystalline wax that's just going to give it that fingerprint proof finish that's uh, very high melt temperature hard wearing wax so that this shine will last for a long long time so a thin layer is all you need let that set up and then we'll buff that in And I'm really happy with that. That's beautiful. Beautifully shiny. So there it is. A close-up look at the finished product. I've just got to take the foot off, which I'm going to do now. But you can see the beautiful shine that we get with those products. So let's see how we're going to reverse this and take off that tenon. Okay, so I have this chunk of wood that was laying around that I started turning for a demo the other day. A demo of a really bad sanding job. That was actually the reason I did that. Um, I've got a faceplate on that, so I'm going to mount that onto the lathe. And this bowl will go over top of that. I'll put some cloth in there to uh, protect it. I've got this uh, stuff that you put in the bottom of your kitchen drawers. And that will protect it from scratching the inside of our bowl. So now I'm going to place the bowl over top of that. And I'll bring the tailstock in with the live center. Lock that into place. Give that a little bit of pressure. It's seated nicely. So now I can just nibble away at this until it's just a little nub. Um, and then I can clean up and sand and, and finish this bottom with the speed down low. That's pretty close to true. So it's important that that it's slightly concave that way the bowl will sit nicely and flat on the table right now it's just a little bit convex so I have to remove a little bit more in here I'm gonna turn the speed down now to about 300 rpm and I'm gonna sand this from 100 grit up to 400 uh, try to make this as flat as I possibly can for my maker's mark and then I can take that little nib off put my maker's mark on it and then uh, just put a little bit of finish on there and we'll be done this is sanded to 400 grit so what I'm going to do now is remove the tailstock and carefully remove the bowl without dropping it hopefully or scratching it little bit of a rub with some Yorkshire grit
bit of gloss let that wrap off a little bit and then we'll buff that in and there it is finished with my logo on the bottom side now admittedly this is a fairly basic bowl I could have done some more texture or something on the underside which I I just didn't want to that's for another demonstration so uh, but that's how you can get a bowl from a green log to a finished bowl in about a month's time or less than a month 25 26 days 27 days um, once it's dry enough to turn then you can finish it but uh, if you rough it out initially down to about a tenth thickness of the diameter so a 10 inch would be an inch a 20 inch would be two inch so uh, get it down to about a, um, about that and then uh, put it in a plastic bag like I said and microwave it every day two or three times 55 seconds at a time and then let it steam off a little bit and get it back in that bag before it cracks and then the next day do the same thing turn the bag inside out each time as well release the moisture because there'll be there'll be moisture in that bag that you're releasing uh, a lot quicker than if you just put the blank in a bag of shavings so uh, i hope that was helpful for you and i hope you like this project and uh, enjoy the rest of the wood uh, show if you need some yorkshire grit or hampshire sheen or mylands products then uh, Come over to my store, Woodsley Summercraft. I have it all there available. You can visit my website, www.woodsleysummercraft.ca, and uh, there'll be a, a link there where you can get your uh, coupon, 10% discount for the next three days, for these three days. Take care. Thanks for watching.